What's going on everybody? Ronnie DiMaggio here, product specialist at BMW of Morristown. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a technical discussion and engine breakdown on the B58 engine. This is of course an X7 xDrive 40i. We have an 840 behind us. We have a 540 on the other end of the showroom. So lots of B58s in the showroom. We have a whole row of B58 powered X5s out front. So uh, the B58 is very common in BMW's lineup today. It's kind of our corporate three liter turbocharged inline six cylinder engine. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over why we use it in so many cars, what's so great about it, why it's one of BMW's best engines ever, and why it is so beloved in the aftermarket community. People love the B58 in the aftermarket world, BMW enthusiasts, and just BMW drivers that own a B58 powered car tend to like it very much. And for good reason, we're gonna go into all that stuff. We'll get technical with like bore and stroke, compression ratio, some of those technical details. And we'll also just talk about some general uh, characteristics of the engine and why it is so popular. So with that said, let's go jump over to our 540. We'll pop the hood and we'll talk about the B58. All right, so here we are under the hood of a 540i. This is one of many B58 powered cars in the BMW lineup. Just to give you an idea of the B58 powered cars, anything that ends with a 40i has a B58. So 540, uh, M440, M340, X340, M340, X5, X340i, all those 40i uh, labeled cars are powered by a B58, at least for the US market. So like I said, the B58 is a three liter um, turbocharged inline six cylinder engine, single mono scroll turbocharger. And it was first introduced in 2015 with the LCI version of the F30 in the F30 340i. It replaced the N55, which was used um, in the F30 335 and many, many other BMW cars. The B58 is a modular engine, which means that each cylinder is 500 cc's. Uh, so it is the engine upon which the B48, the four cylinder, the B38 is a three cylinder used in Europe and other markets. Uh, all of those engines are on a modular platform. So you have a 500 cc cylinder. So with six cylinders, obviously you have um, about 3000 cc's or three liters. Um, so let's get in, take a look at the B58 here. If you guys wanna get in there and take a look, we can go over some of the technical specifications. So. As you know, the B58 is an evolution of the N55, and in you know being an improvement on the N55, it comes with some nice benefits over the N55. It is still direct injection. It has double Thanos as well as valve tronic, of course, but the B58 runs a higher compression ratio. It's 11 to one, uh, whereas the N55 was not as high compression. Um, it is still a long stroke engine, so the stroke is bigger than the bore, uh, which gives it really nice low end torque, although it caps the red line a little bit. So the B58 only revs to 7,000, which is pretty high for a modern turbo engine. However, not crazy high, like something like an S54 or an S65, those crazy high revving BMW engines. That's not what the B58 is about with its um, pretty severely long stroke design. It doesn't rev crazy high, however, it makes great torque. Another thing interesting about the B58, and we can actually show this to you guys, if we take a look under the hood here and we lift our engine cover up, you can see that it has a plenum installed charge air cooler um, under the cover there. So unlike the N55, which had an air to air intercooler, the B58 has an air to water intercooler integrated into the intake plenum. Uh, what that means is it uses fluid rather than just air uh, running through the intercooler to cool off the charged air. So air gets super hot when it's going through a turbocharger and then we have to cool that air before we send it into the engine. Otherwise you're gonna get pre-detonation and things like that that you don't like. So BMW um, noticed that that may have been a weak spot with the N55. Uh, so they went to air to water like they did in the S55 uh, for the B58 which keeps intake air temps uh, nice and low, which is a nice benefit the, of the B58. Another thing that's great about the B58 is it features a closed deck design. Obviously we can't show you that uh, without taking the head off, which uh, we're not gonna do here in our beautiful showroom, but the closed deck allows for a more rigid block. Um, so that doesn't make a huge difference as far as people that will just drive the car in its stock form. If you're not making any more power than stock, 
all it does is you know give you the peace of mind that you're driving a little bit more robust machine uh, however in the aftermarket a closed deck design will be able to hold a little bit more power if you're putting bigger turbos and adding more boost and doing fun things like that a closed deck design will be more robust it'll hold the power better as opposed to the n55 which was an open deck um, another great thing about the b58 is it has forged rods and a forged crankshaft from factory no forged pistons um, but if you're familiar with bmws you know that if you're throwing a lot of power at one you're going to bend a rod usually before you crack a piston so you have forged rods and a forged crankshaft which is awesome from an oem uh, to make an engine with forged semi-forged internals like i said no forged pistons but forged bottom end components to make a more robust more durable engine so these cars run more boost um, than the n55 from factory the b58 does um, and bmw wanted to really over engineer it over build it so it could tolerate that and so you got the closed deck you got the forged rods and you got the forged crankshaft you also got uh, the air to water intercooler to keep intake air temps nice and low um, those temperatures being low will obviously help with more power, but it'll also make the engine run better. If you're not pre-detonating, you're not getting uh, spark knock or anything like that. The engine will always run better. Now, another interesting thing about the B58, again, we can come in and take a look. You can actually see in the back of the engine, if we want to take a look at that, we have these purple cables here in the back. See if we can shine some light on that. Those are part of the mild hybrid system, if we can see those purple cables right there. So the modern versions of the B58, the original B58 in the F30 was not a full 48 volt mild hybrid. However, um, the B58s nowadays are. So any new BMW 540, X5, 40i, uh, X740i will have that 48 volt system. What that does is assist the engine um, BMW says it's an 11 horsepower electric motor. They feel a lot quicker with the mild hybrid system, so 11 horsepower might be a little underrated. Maybe it's just the torque fill, but what it does is actually supply power when the turbo isn't fully spooled up. So that's giving you quicker acceleration from a standstill in certain ranges where the engine is not running at its most efficient uh, as far as power goes. The mild hybrid system can kind of kick in there and assist you with that. It also helps with the auto start stop. So uh, the auto start stop runs a bit more smoothly because it has a stronger starter motor when it needs to use that. Um, it also is able to start the car on a warm start. So a cold start, um, it will still use a traditional starter motor. However, on a warm start, if the engine is above 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it will start using that 48 volt system for a smoother, quieter, less vibration uh, startup, which is smoother for the um, people in the car, obviously, and it's just less load on the engine. So that 48 volt system is really cool for the B58. It's already a fantastic engine, and that 48 volt system only makes it a little better. So those are the technical specs. Let's talk a little bit about the characteristics of the engine. So like I said, really great low end torque. Um, it feels really punchy below even 2000 RPMs. Uh, you can just kind of, uh, what would traditionally be considered bogging the engine, giving it a lot of throttle at low RPMs, you can get away with that in these cars uh, because they make such great torque and they're designed to do that. So you can give it all the throttle you want, you know, within reason at a low RPM range and get acceptable and impressive levels of acceleration. Whereas if you did that in an NA car or even, you know, an earlier BMW turbo engine, you wouldn't get that immediate response in the B58 you do, which is awesome. Um, the B58 is also capable of returning pretty impressive fuel economy. In the 540, it's rated for 25 combined. That varies a tiny bit model to model, but for a car that makes 335 horsepower stock, 25 miles per gallon combined is pretty good. You can return over 30 on the highway, which is awesome. Um, and uh, the B58 will do all of that um, while still being reliable, which is a really important thing. And it's something that BMW has struggled with reputation wise, uh, in the interest of full disclosure, reliability is always kind of something that BMW um, has tried to prove that they're able to do. And the B58 has finally done that. So the B58 has been used since, like we said, the LCI F30. 
and it has proven to be reliable both in stock form as well as for those folks that are into the aftermarket modifying these cars. Um, you can throw whatever you want at them within reason, uh, downpipe tune, and you're good to go. It will run, it'll run happy, um, and you likely won't have problems. Obviously, that's not to say that it's always gonna be bulletproof. You know, no engine, uh, no matter how good, can be totally without problem. It's not a maintenance-free car, but you will very rarely have problems with your B58 um, that much we are pretty much sure of because of how long it's been around, how many people we have driving them. Uh, they are very dependable engines, which is awesome and great for BMW's reputation because, uh, like I said, reliability is always something that is called into question with older BMWs at least. Finally, the new ones are totally bucking that trend, uh, the B58 kind of at the forefront there. So those are all the details and characteristics of the B58. Last thing we want to talk about is the different horsepower levels. Varies a little bit from model to model, but generally speaking, the B58 in cars like the 540 X5 uh, will make uh, 335 horsepower. You can get 375 in the 740 and the X7 xDrive 40i. And then you have 382 in cars with the M badge on them. So M40 X3s, M340s, M440s, cars like that will make 382 horsepower. Of course, that is the quoted figure. Uh, we've seen time and time again, that's proven to be underrated. BMW tends to be pretty conservative with their horsepower ratings, uh, but those are the quoted figures and the cars are quick enough to kind of prove uh, that they make at least that much power. But that is our technical breakdown on the B58. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, this one was a little bit of fan service to those folks that are into those technical details like I am and like many of us are here at BMW Morristown. But uh, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at BMW of Morristown and drop a comment down below if you have any questions about the B58 or anything else BMW related. Um, but that'll do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.